Ever since the first rocket launched in 1957, people have been expanding and improving the idea. One such innovation is the solid rocket booster. What is it, you may ask? The solid rocket booster is a reusable motor that is used to launch a rocket into space. So, what is the history of rockets, and how did the solid rocket booster get invented? The evolution of modern rocketry emerged at the end of the 1800s due to the influence of such authors as Jules Verne and H.G. Wells. The fathers of rocketry, including Goddard, used liquid propellants, initially using liquid hydrogen and oxygen, then liquid and gasoline, after much testing of different rocket fuel combinations. Many of the early rockets were developed to carry bombs. In 1928, Germany made the first rocket-powered aircraft and also developed the V-2 rocket, which was the first warhead. Over the years, the range of rockets increased and the mass of each rocket also increased, such as carrying a 5-ton warhead. In the 1950s, the first launch into space of the Sputnik satellite was followed by sending astronauts into orbit. The first solid rocket was the WAC Corporal, Tiny Tim Goddard. WAC stands for Without Attitude Control. This development led to the ultimate design of the solid rocket boosters for the NASA Space Shuttle Program. So what's so interesting about the solid rocket booster is that it uses solid propellant, aluminum powder to be exact, instead of liquid fuel. This means it doesn't need a large cryogenic tank hooked up to the rocket, saving weight. Once the rocket's engines start, the solid rocket boosters are ignited and lift the rocket up into space. These boosters help push the rocket outside the atmosphere, and once their job is done, they fall off. When they're falling, they release a parachute and fall safely into the ocean to be collected for reuse. They only help the rocket for about two minutes and then run out of fuel. However, it helps the rocket get out of Earth's atmosphere. The solid rocket booster started being developed because NASA wanted to lift heavy loads in a cheaper way, which would hardly be possible with dispensable rockets. The solid rocket motors are designed in such a way that there are very few moving parts. The propellant used for a solid rocket booster is primarily powdered aluminum mixed with ammonium perchlorate, which acts as the oxidizer since it contains the oxygen for combustion. The design is such that there is an opening in the middle of the propellant that burns from the inside out. Once ignited, it cannot be extinguished or controlled. Since there is an opening in the middle of the propellant, the surface area of the inner core determines the amount of thrust throughout the burn cycle. This inner core of the propellant is known as the grain, and engineers designed the geometry of the grain to either maximize surface area at ignition to maximize initial thrust, or to flatten the surface area to have constantly increasing thrust. To provide an example, the propellant that has a grain that resembles a snowflake has a lot of surface area. The amount of thrust produced is extremely high in the early stages and quickly loses thrust. However, the grain that is a simple circle has less surface area in the design, thus the thrust steadily increases from ignition until burnout. Compared to liquid fuel engines, solid rocket boosters have both advantages and disadvantages. Because solid rocket boosters use solid fuel, it provides greater thrust with less weight. It doesn't require a cryogenic tank, which liquid fuel engines need to stay cool. Solid rocket boosters are also simpler and cheaper to produce. Because they're reusable, you don't need to make so many of them, unlike liquid fuel, which cannot be used more than once and is very complicated to produce. Solid rocket boosters also have their disadvantages, though. For example, once they're ignited, they can't be reignited. This means that it has to use all of its fuel in one go. This is where the liquid fuel has its advantages because you can control liquid fuel. There are so many advancements that have yet to be discovered in the area of space travel. We have barely scratched the surface. Although the solid rocket booster was a great advancement in the past, there is so much to improve upon. In the future, we may possibly see an electric motor, or we may figure out a way to stop solid fuel ignition, or we'll see something no one could even imagine. All of this is to say we have made advancements to space travel, but there is so much left to do.